Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and boy do I have a fantastic one today and you're going to see why in a minute. This may be episode of the year for me. Um, yeah, and I got some good stuff planned for next week too. I got some stuff in route to me that is <laughs> fantastic as well. I cannot wait. It's going to be good. All right, so let's just get the cat out of the bag right away. Um, if you've been following me on Instagram, you may have seen that I scored an Auto World Ultra Raw. I did not score this on the pegs, obviously, but I was able to make a trade plus cash for it deal at my local monthly meet. I actually saw this a month ago. The guy had it on his table. He dropped his price significantly. And with the help of Crazy Todd and some trading and some wheeling and dealing, I was able to put this in my collection. Yes, it's an ultra raw, the ultimate chase vehicle from any brand, one of 10 in the world. We are going to open it up. Yes, we're going to crack it. Um, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you know this isn't the first one I've opened up. But I think this is the only one I've gotten this year. Pretty sure it is. This will be the 11th uh, Raw in my collection. The way that I'm collecting the Auto World Ultra Raws, you guys know I'm pretty much a completionist when it comes to the Ultra Reds. What I am doing with the Ultra Raws is I'm trying to get one example for each Auto World tooling. That's still a pretty lofty goal. Okay, and I didn't have the Pontiac Grand Prix. This thing is sick. It's got gold rims, which is kind of cool, but I'm really happy that I got something with black tires. So, yes, and I will try to, if I have a choice, I'm probably not going to, but I'll try to get all of my Raws to have black tires. I do have two Raws that have white tires. All right, anyway, I am, this is, this is like, piece of the year probably for me well aside from my uh prototype uh, johnny lightning uh you know van that i got that or pre-production white lightning well and we'll see that you'll see that when i go to the when i do my top 10 i'll probably do a top 10 video of the top 10 things added to my collection i will post it to lamleygroup.com as well as youtube and i'll probably do a little write-up on there as well like i do every year but anyway i have so Oh, stoked to have this in my collection. So that is fantastic. Um, but we've got other stuff too that's really cool. And more Auto World as well. I've got an M&J Toys exclusive Silverado with the camper top. That is very cool. One of 3,000 pieces. The Ultra Red for this is going to be very hard to get because uh, they go for ridiculous prices. But uh, we are going to open up this as well. We're also going to open up this one too. This is a Mio exclusive uh, Chevy Silverado. Again, this one with like a rusty kind of golf look to it. I got this one from SC Diecast, my pals. Uh, let's see, what else did I get? I got, oh, I got a Mini GT from SC Diecast. We are going to take a look at this as well. This thing's pretty cool looking. Digging on that. So we're going to check that out. We're going to also check out, what else did I get from SC? Oh, I got, I got this. Now, I said in my last episode, I typically don't buy unlicensed models. And then what did I do the day that that episode posted? I bought an unlicensed model. Well, because I saw it and it looks so freaking cool that I had to pick it up, and SC Diecast had this thing. It's it's uh, Stance Hunters, which I believe this is the first Stance Hunters piece in my collection. Now, I think all their stuff is not licensed by the car manufacturer, so depending on how you feel about that, you may not like this thing. I am a little wishy-washy on how I feel about it, but I got this because I really wanted to check it out. Um, and it's a Ferrari F12 TDF. And I don't think that, uh, I don't know, any other die-cast manufacturer that made premium Ferraris has made an F12. It's kind of a weird one. Uh, I believe it's a front-engine Ferrari. So and I think the hood opens on this. We're going to check that out. 
I'm kind of excited to look at this, but I got this from SC Diecast. So SC Diecast, as you know, are my pals. They've been getting um, lots of weird stuff aside from Mattel and Mio stuff is what they usually get. A lot of green light, a lot of some auto world, um, you know, the standard stuff. And then they've also now been getting a lot of like import stuff. So that's kind of cool. So I, I'm liking that and the, you know, license and unlicensed stuff. So I get to at least check it out if I don't decide I want to get it, but I picked this thing up. So I'm interested to look at that. Uh, so that's that. The other two things I got at the meet, I did pick up one of these, the manga racing, uh, R 34. I thought this was super cool. Um, there's a gentleman on Instagram that kind of like makes this style of custom and they're really awesome and expensive, but this is the closest thing I'll probably get to one. I think it's father or farther. I forget the guy's name and it's something weird, but he's on Instagram. If you guys are on Instagram and you're into diecast, you probably know what I'm talking about. If not, sorry. Uh, but this thing is super cool. Limited to, uh, 3,600 pieces. It's a nice, it's a skyline R34 and it's, done to make it look like art you know it's cool um so we're gonna check that out we'll open up that the other thing i picked up was this Ertl firebird so i snagged this in the package very cool and then uh of course we got a package from jay as we do almost every week he grabbed me some weird stuff as usual we got another nascar piece a winston cup uh, limited edition 1995 Goodwrench. Uh, what is this? A Chevy Lumina or something? Monte Carlo? This thing. So we got that. We'll take a look at that. We got a Matchbox van. Uh, I think it's a Ford van. And around the world, Hong Kong. Cool photo. Turn over to look through camera with a little plastic camera. So that's neat. And it comes with a passport of fun. Passport to fun. So we're going to check out that. We got a passport to fun, guys. Um, and then he got me this. This is really cool. This is a Subaru WRX STI. I think these are pretty cheaply made, but they're pretty desirable. I have one other car in this like set in my collection, but it's not this blue uh, Subi. So really, really cool. So we're going to check out that. And there's more. Just wait, there's more. We also got, um, I found one mainline in the store. Not the Super, but we got that guy. So that's pretty cool. We got a Porsche. We'll open up that. And then I got some mail from Mattel. We got this Elite 64 piece. So we are going to check that out. Debating on whether or not to get it, but when I went to order this thing, they still had these. And I'm like, well, I might as well pick it up now that I'm doubling up on the shipping. This, well, it's all stickered together, so I can't open it up. If you're not familiar with it, you're going to have to wait till the next segment to take a look. But it is the Lamborghini Centenario, Centenari, I don't know how to pronounce it. You guys know I suck at Italian pronunciations. Um, but we got this. Lambo, Lamborghini, in a massive box. The box is just insanely big on these things. Uh, but yeah. So we got a lot of cool stuff to look at. And I am just, I mean, I know this is going to make some people cringe for me to open this up because of how rare this piece is and how expensive it would be if I would have paid straight cash for it. Um, but it is what it is. I can't put my other raws back into the package. So we've already made our decision and that's what we're going to do. Let's do thumbnail. I mean, look at that raw. Look at that gleaming raw. I mean, this is a pretty cool thumbnail, all right? This will bring them, all right? Nothing balancing on the head today. All right, let's get into this. We've got a lot to open up, and I'm really excited, actually, for pretty much all of it. So, all right, let's flip the camera around and uh, keep her moving. All right, guys, we are going to start with the Auto World stuff. I'm going to let this thing just chill for a minute believe it or not even though i've opened up every one of those i've ever got in my collection so this will be the 11th one i think there's one maybe i got that was already loose might have been two actually i can't remember but you know i've opened up a bunch of these every single time though there is a debate that goes on in my head as to whether or not i should stop doing this and i should just 
let it sit in the package and display it in the package, put it in a protecto. But I just can't do it. I'm going to have to open it up because I've committed to doing it and, I'm, and we're going to go ahead and do it. But while we're, that's chilling there for a minute, I see and I almost like decided right there that I, we're not going to open it. But we are going to open it. But let's go ahead and take care of a couple of these square bodies real quick. We're going to go in. Uh, we'll do all the auto world stuff first, though. So we will open up that raw pretty quick here. So we're going to start with uh, this guy here, this Golf 1977 Chevy Silverado. This is an M&J Toys exclusive, one of 4,800 pieces. Um, the thing I like about M&J Toys that I've mentioned before is these come with these little boxes. I like these little boxes because if you ever want to store your collection, you have a place to put your uh, vehicle where it can be kind of protected and identified at the same time, which is pretty awesome. So I do like that. So yes, we're at the thousandth or so square body. This one's got the uh, tailgate that doesn't want to stay up. Um, in order to fix that, in case you have one of these in your collection, typically what you got to do is kind of manipulate this uh, bumper piece a little bit. And then you can get it to stay up sometimes. Uh, yeah, this one's particularly loose, but uh, with some more finagling, I will get that to do that. We just don't need to do it right here on camera. Um, but yeah, you get the box, and there's the truck. Yes, yet another golf thing. You got another square body pickup. I get it. Um, this is like double oversaturation. But MJ J Toys will keep making them. Why? Because, well, they know they're going to sell. And without a doubt, this will sell. And it, I mean, it's pretty cool. I like the fact that it's weathered. So it's got that going on uh, for it. It's got the Goodyear lettered tires. That's pretty cool. And I mean, overall, it's not, it's not a bad looking square body. I just know that uh, I'm going to get at least one comment from at least one particular person that uh, they fell asleep during the square body section of this video. And I get it. Uh, but yeah, we are at the point now where you have to do something really unique with one of these trucks or make it just look like really nice in stock uh, for me to really get excited about it because we've seen so many. So this really, if I wasn't an auto world completionist, I can't say that I would have actually purchased this. Um, it's mostly just the fact that I'm, I need to try it. I'm trying to get every single one of them. And that's, you know, just the completionist in me, you know, very few things I'm a completionist with, but the, you know, auto world's kind of one of them. Uh, that's what kind of forced me to make this purchase. So there you go. But if you do want one of these, after I just kind of dogged it, uh, my buddy's SC Diecast, I think, still has these available, and you can pick them up from them. Uh, very, very cool. So we've got that. And then we've got this guy. This is another M&J Toys exclusive 1983 Chevy Silverado with camper, limited to 3,000 pieces. This, to me, is a lot cooler than uh, the Golf thing. Okay, this is a little bit more unique. We've got the square body with a camper top. I think it's the first time we've seen uh, the lowered square body with the camper top, which is a little weird. But we've also seen the first one to come out was the uh, like the Overlander one from uh, AutoWorldStore.com. They did an exclusive. This one does not come with the box, and clearly that's fine because of the size of the camper top. It wouldn't fit in the box anyway. So we got this thing. Uh, really why I think this thing is super cool is the color combination on it. I think it looks amazing uh, with these, these stripes and such. Now, this camper top thing is like a plastic that's like painted so it's all clear plastic that's been painted you do have to be somewhat careful with these you can probably take this out of the bed i am not going to do it just for fear of what may happen if i try but we are going to leave it in there and i'm not just not going to worry about that we're going to leave it in this it's got its own tooling number 164-047 and so actually it was made before 
the square body. I think originally this camper top is the same one that likely I think was used in Johnny Lightning for the Ranger, or not Ranger, the F-150. So we still got the opening hood. There you go there. And like I said, the, uh, the color combo on this truck I think is what really looks cool. So this thing with the aftermarket rims and the painted bumpers even, um, I think it's a pretty awesome looking piece. My example doesn't roll all that well, that's okay. Uh, but this is more what I'm talking about, something that somebody might get excited about when it comes to a square body truck, something a little bit more uh, unique and something that hasn't quite been done yet. So that is pretty cool. We've seen some golf square bodies, pretty much had enough of those, but we do have this now and that is pretty nifty. All right. What else do we got? Do we are we on to raw yet, or should we open the Johnny Lightning? Let's do it since we got M and J Toys here. Yeah, I'm just delaying. Uh, M and J Toys. This is one of 3,600 pieces. It is uh, an adult collectible, 14 plus apparently. M and J Toys, the manga racing i even like how the packaging is that's kind of cool and uh with the card art and everything so this is like an anime style kind of r34 and i think that's really cool so something again pretty unique uh m and j toys does do a good job with their exclusives at times they will come up with stuff that is pretty unique uh that looks pretty awesome and this uh definitely would qualify for that so this is a cool Johnny Lightning. Definitely digging this. As you can see, all the little detail on there. It's meant to look like a drawing of an R34. A drawing of one speeding down the road. And uh, it does look pretty nifty. Again, the headlights leave a little bit to be desired, but again, it's supposed to be kind of a drawing. I just think they could have drawn the headlights maybe a little bit better. Maybe the taillights too. But this is quite, quite cool in my book. So I had to scoop one of these up. Just had to do it. So very, very nifty. Very, very cool. All right. All right. So this guy. So this is on a version B card. It would not matter where you found this raw. If you found a raw on either version A or version B, it's just like the ultra red situation where it's going to be the same on either card. And roughly it would be an even split five and five between the two cards. So only 10 of these in existence, which is pretty wild if you think about it. This is the 1964 Pontiac Grand Prix Royal Bobcat. Now, this is the version A car. Normal release, standard release. Had to grab these out before we open up that one. Very interesting color on this. I forget the name of it. It's like fire thorn something or I don't, I don't really remember but it's it's a weird color very interesting color and then we've also got the version b here which is in saddle bronze poly as we can see written right there that's the cool thing about auto worlds they use factory uh, color codes stuff like that it's really neat so here's this one you can open up the hood you can take a look in there you've got an engine there it's hard to see but you get the idea this one has saddle bronze poly with uh, basically the same color interior. This one has a white interior. And then we have the ultra red, which I opened up when we did the full series. By the way, this is, what is this? Uh, 2022 release three is this series. So here is the ultra red. As you can see the chase traits for the ultra red, we have an ultra red base, Ultra red body color, ultra red interior, white rims, and the regular black tires. Interesting, they went with full black on this one and not the uh, the white wall or white line or whatever you want to call those. But here is the ultra red, a pretty attractive looking ultra red. Actually, all the ultra reds in this set look pretty good because they have black tires. The white rims are kind of cool too. But now we have this guy, and this is our. This is our Ultra Raw, and uh, we're going to open it up. Um, 
Yeah, let me do an audio check real quick before. All right, I just wanted to make sure like everything is working here. I've had some audio issues in the past, and it would really suck to like miss this on camera. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up again. One of ten. The card is pretty darn good. I mean, look at there. I mean, there's a scuff right there that gives us reason, right? That devalues it enough. We should open it up, right? That's justification. I'm trying to find justification anywhere. So as, uh, just to look around the card, this one has a white base, ultra raw body, white interior, gold uh, rims or hubcaps or whatever. So all the raws in this series will share this trait. So any of them, whatever casting you would have gotten from this series, there was a, a Ford GT. That would have been a sweet one to get. Uh, the 2017 Wrangler, the Cadillac Coupe de Ville, Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack, and the 2012 uh, Mustang GT. Now, I can't even say that I've seen all of those and what they look like because these are so hard to find. But we are going to go ahead and open this up. No going back now. And let's check it out. One of 10 in the world, Auto World Ultra Raw. And yeah, this thing's cool. If you've never seen one of these, um, they're nifty. They got all the regular like trim and stuff, but they're obviously unpainted except for they do clear coat them. So they are clear coated. And they are extremely rare. So there you have it. You can see kind of all the imperfections and stuff in the actual metal. There's like a little pitting and stuff and uh, quite cool. And I did not have this, this tooling. So perfect, right? Can see the production date on the bottom there 518 2022 and i think that might just indicate like the week they were produced because i think all these are going to have the same date on them yeah 518 2022 in the red as well but uh look at that i mean admittedly i mean it might not be that much to look at it's just a raw version of the car but the the fact that we know how um insanely rare this thing is Finding one of these in store, I still have not done it yet. It's been actually, I found one ultra red this year in the store, and that was a, a feat enough. But finding an ultra red actually on the pegs in the store, I would lit, my heart would literally skip a beat. Like it would be, that would be the find of the ages. I've never found one. It would be amazing to find one. And I think one day, one day, I will actually find one of these on the pegs. That's like finding the golden ticket, right? So yeah, look at this sucker. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, so definitely gonna make my top 10 pieces of the year that I've added to my collection based on rarity alone. That's that. And plus how I was patient with it. As tempted as I was to try to get it when I first saw it, I was like, let's just hang on. Let's see what happens here. And luckily, eventually, I was able to uh, roundabout make a deal for it. And that's just the way I operate. You guys know I'm pretty thrifty when it comes to this stuff. And we were able to make it happen with a little bit of patience. So, yeah, very, very cool. So that's going in the Auto World raw collection number 11 for me all right we could just cut the video there but we're gonna go ahead and move on because we do have some other cool stuff to look at we got a nissan sylvia top secret in silver this thing is looking pretty cool this is a mio exclusive although it's also available internationally just in the box you guys know the drill if you collect mini gt uh, Mini GT would be my other favorite brand. I guess if we're going to say I have two favorite brands, we're going to go Mini GT and Auto World. That's pretty much a no-brainer now for me. It's clearly the stuff I buy the most of. Uh, Mini GT, oddly though, I usually don't go for chases at all. They do have chases in the M&J toys 
uh, stuff. I just, I don't, I think I have one in my collection and that's it. But there you go. Nissan Silvia Top Secret Silver, number 545. I love these boxes as well. These are the best boxes in the biz as far as how you can collect your die cast and keep it safe if you were to move it around. And here's this tooling. Very cool. We got inserted details for headlights. We got that kind of faux carbon fiber look, top secret logo stuff. And uh, inserted details for taillights. Rolls like a dream. And uh, this thing is very, very cool. So definitely digging this. Per use, Mini GT added one to the collection. It's honestly hard not to get every single Mini GT I see. They're just so cool. They're just doing such a good job. And uh, very, very minimal uh, quality issues. At least I've gotten very lucky with them. I've heard some other people complain about certain quality issues here and there but that's every die cast manufacturer to be honest but uh i've really had a low instance of issues for the hundreds of these that i have so very very cool we'll put that one aside and let's peek at this all right we have an unlicensed ferrari clearly not licensed this is a made in china thing Stance Hunters, one of those pop-up kind of China brands. I don't understand what's going on with all of that, but I decided to pick this thing up because, well, it's pretty neat looking. So let's go ahead and check it out. And I was just very intrigued by it. Limited edition, one of 799, according to this, in the Stance Hunters High Rev series, the F12 TDF, which is like the... Isn't it like the crazy version of the F12? The very, very limited version of the F12. Um, you have to be like a longtime Ferrari customer to have purchased it, as far as I believe. Uh, acrylic case, pretty standard kind of thing. Uh, base, pretty standard kind of thing. This is a double screw base. Annoying. I don't like that. I prefer the one screw in the peg. Um, and then it looks like the hood likely opens. There's like this little sticker that is holding it there. So we're going to have to try to get that off um, without damaging anything. I'm going to try. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. All right. We got that pulled off. And then we need to unscrew it from the base, which is going to be another little fun thing to do. I'm going to try to like hold it right there very delicately. This thing seems to be very, very delicate. All right, screws come out real easy. I'm going to remove this in the place where I'm not going to lose the screws. Does it... Eh, it wants to kind of roll. I didn't think it would roll at all. It goes backwards. We got reverse, but not really forward. Uh, just taking a look outside the piece, we've got uh, detailed brake assemblies in there, discs and calipers and whatnot. It appears to have a very detailed interior. It's kind of hard to see in there, but it uh, it does have that. We've got the uh, defogger uh, wire thingies in the window, in the back window. Very, very tiny little Ferrari logo that'd be funny if we really zoomed in on this and it didn't even say ferrari like it said something different because it's not licensed or whatever but you know in china they don't really have to like skirt around that stuff they can just do it because there's no copyright issues right or something like that i don't know how that works but international copyright law so does this hood open and if it does open is it supposed to open like, it's certainly they put a sticker there, right? Because it opens. That would be that would be why, right? I don't see any other reason uh, why they would have a sticker there. I'm trying not to, like, shake while I'm holding this thing, but here. Steady hand, steady hand. Just don't have it sometimes. Um, how are we going to get this open without damaging anything? Do I dare? Oh, where is my little hoop propping tool? I act like I actually have one. 
Um, normally I do the little finger bang thing, and I don't know why well, that came out wrong. Um, and normally I don't, there we go. There you go. Look at the detail in there. Can you see in there? Very cool. Very cool. Look at that. Let me get it to focus. I'm trying real hard here. All right. Look at that. All right. So the hood does open, obviously. And we got plenty of detail under there, more than you'd ever really need under there. That is pretty freaking awesome. Um, so again, it's an, it's an unlicensed model and it's kind of funny. Like some of these unlicensed models are just more detailed than like anything you're going to find from a licensed brand. And it's got to be because maybe the cost savings on the licensing that they're able to produce this stuff. Well, and it's made in China and stuff, right? A lot of stuff in China comes cheap to us here in the U S and uh, elsewhere. Uh, but this is uh, very, very neat. So really, really cool. But unlicensed nonetheless. It almost feels like, yeah, it looks like the exhaust are kind of like separate pieces too. I don't know. I'll take some neat pictures of this probably at some point and post them to Instagram. So look out for that. But this is a pretty neat Ferrari. Uh, not a licensed model, but still pretty cool all right what do we got next let's do hot wheels elite we've got this uh land rover defender 90 pickup and let's go ahead and get that open all right so hot wheels elite if you're not familiar with these, these are sold through the Redline Club or whatever, Hot Wheels, Mattel Creations, whatever they call it these days, the website, Hot Wheels website. Uh, I don't know. They're not like limited to the point where they're numbered. They come in a protecto like an RLC piece. It's Elite 64. Uh, I don't know what release we're on. I think there's one I'm still missing. I never got the Mustang. Oh, it looks like we're on number five. That would be, that would make sense. I think the only one I'm missing is the Mustang. That weird Mustang with all the weird body kit stuff. I never picked one of those up. I don't know. Maybe I'll get one eventually. I just didn't pick one up when they they launched. I think that one launched already. Let's go ahead and uh, open this up, though. Some of these uh, Elite 64s I'm really digging, and some of them not so much. The Lamborghini, I think, was my favorite so far, but I think this one looks really cool as well. So Elite 64 is actually more detailed really than like RLC stuff. And it just, it's got more little components and pieces to it. It's just really kind of a premium uh, die cast, but not like the flashiness or all the hype surrounded by the RLC, right? But look at that. So these don't sell out nearly as fast. I And that might be because of production number, I'm not sure. But this thing is pretty cool. We've got uh, very detailed, of course, all over the place. And then we've got inserted details for the headlights. The Land Rover logo up there. If you're a Land Rover fan, this thing's a must grab. And the cool thing about the Elite 64s are still, like, even though they're, like, uh, supposed to be, like, accurate scale kind of replica kind of deal, you know, things are supposed to be the elite 64 like 164 scale yada 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 they're still giving them hot wheels flavor they're they're not just like they haven't released any like just straight up stock vehicles okay and that might be what people want is just straight up stock vehicle vehicles but they are keeping their like hot wheels identity brand identity by not making these things stock vehicles and kind of you know, kind of making wild versions of vehicles still, but making them very detailed. And I think that that's actually what they should be doing because there are a lot of brands now that make very, very detailed, 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 and detailed, and detailed, whatever, uh, stock style 
vehicles, right? That are 164 scale, they're true 164 scale, they're stock. It's a standard thing, right? Why would Hot Wheels get into that space? There's not really a reason to do it. They should do it like this. This is actually what they should be doing, making them still have that brand identity of Hot Wheels, making it look, um, you know, a little more wild, a little more uh, artistic uh, than just a stock vehicle, and also make it kind of like a true 164 scale detailed replica at the same time. So I think that that this formula is really what's what it's supposed to be. I mean, that's that's how they should be doing. And I know a lot of people want them to make like just stock stuff and are like, well, why are they doing that? You know, they should get into the premium space and make, uh, you know, detailed stock replicas of stuff. But why would they do that? There's other brands that do that. They need to keep their brand identity and uh, do something somewhat unique at the same time. So I think that this is really awesome. So the more of these I get into my collection, the more that the, the, the whole idea of it is growing on me and the more I kind of respect it. So that's where I'm at with that. You guys may feel free to disagree. Let me know in the comments down below. But this is pretty darn cool, actually. This is something I wasn't very excited about. Now that I've got it in hand, I think it is actually very cool. So that's the way it goes. Sometimes you need to get something uh, in your hands and actually take a good look at it before you really understand what's going on. And that's, you know, it's kind of a life lesson there, I guess. Whatever. I don't really... Should be given life lessons, but all right, let's let's open up this thing. Now, this thing is another story. This is a, a matchbox. This is also sold through Mattel Creations. Um, just cutting all of the uh, adhesive here, holding this thing together. I suppose I didn't do need to do it on both sides. Uh, but there are fast cars, and then there are fast cars, and the Lamborghini Centenario, Centenet, whatever, is the latter. With a limited run of 20 coupe and 20 roadster, this eye-catching ride boasts Lamborghini's first three exhausts, ex first three exhausts executed with real wheel steering. Lamborghini's first three exhausts executed with I don't know that, why does that sentence read so weird. Uh, the ability to reach uh, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just 2.8 seconds will garner approval from most speed enthusiasts. Don't blink, because you might miss this sleek ride as it blazes past you. Um, so, elaborate packaging. we got a big cardboard box. And then we've got tissue protecting the acrylic case. The oversized acrylic case that's holding one small matchbox car. And it looks good, definitely, but hang tight. I mean, how could we look at this thing without grabbing the other ones that have come out? Uh, so this is like your basic moving parts model that we've got to look at and compare. And then this is the same tooling and it was released as the uh, Matchbox Collector's release. So this was just something that you could have found at Walmart if you were lucky enough to find one. Uh, I had to grab these out because this thing in the box obviously was quite the premium price in comparison to this. So we want to see what else are we getting? Is it just going to be the the story on the side of the box along with this elaborate, very good looking packaging though, by the way, um, very nicely done. And we get this thing on the back as well, oh, which has the same thing here. First three exhausts executed with rear wheel steering. I mean, does it matter that it has three? I don't, whatever. What does that mean? Why, why is that a big deal? Um, the rear wheel steering, I guess, is cool. The three exhaust. Because that has three exhaust and rear wheel steering. Whatever. So anyway, you get this nice packaging. The packaging looks cool. And is that really what we're paying for here as far as what makes this thing uh, special? Uh, the packaging looks cool. It does. But what are we getting for the, the... What's special about the car that's in the package is the thing I care about. Obviously, it's the thing I care about since we just opened up one of those. All right. 
that actually came off a lot easier than usual. Usually I struggle with those. Uh, we've got a little plastic bit that's kind of holding the doors down because the, uh, the doors on this are the uh, scissor style doors and they do open up. So we are going to remove it from the base. These screws are very, very tight. And I'm probably going to display this in the case because the case does look pretty cool. Don't really have a lot of room to display it anywhere, but we'll try to make it work. Don't want to lose the screws. And then this little thing that's holding the doors runs all the way through the car. I debated and debated as to whether or not I was going to get this, but I do uh, collect, you know, Lamborghinis. And then I had an opportunity to just pick up this with it. The shipping charge that cuts the shipping down a little bit, uh, the sting of that. So I decided to go ahead with it. So this is a matchbox collector's piece. And really, honestly, I mean, just immediately looking at it, there's really nothing different. Okay. There, there really isn't. So like, if you missed out on this, and you have one of these, I mean, you should probably be satisfied. Unless you like the red color better, like a lot better, like $20 better, then maybe. But uh, we do have the opening doors. Those do look pretty cool. Uh, this does have a plastic base, which I'm sure some people will complain about. Plastic base, plastic base. It's literally the same thing. Uh, same wheels and tires as well, which the rims on this, I don't know. I mean, they're not that great. I don't know, which one would you rather have, personally? The black one, I think, looks a little cooler, a little meaner, a little meaner, cheaper to get. This thing actually looks really cool, too. And this just has plastic wheels. But it's in a matte black with blue. This actually might even be the color combo that I prefer for this. But, I mean, nonetheless, very cool. So, there's nothing really else to talk about, I guess. This thing is just, is it worth the money? Probably not, um, to be honest. It's limited, but we don't know how limited it is, because I don't think there's it's numbered anywhere. No, it's not. It's not numbered anywhere. We have no idea how limited this thing actually is. This is the second Mattel Creations piece I bought. The first one I bought... Uh, was this one here, the 72 Volkswagen Beetle Dragster. And this thing was absolutely uh, worth it for me. It was dusty, geez. Um, this thing made the most sense for me. It actually, here you can see it opens up like that. This was cool because it was a redo of an old classic casting that I also have, and I just had to have it. Um, so that I was really happy to get. This thing, I just, I really got it just because it was a Lamborghini. And I kind of collect Lamborghini stuff. So not Lamborghini stuff, but Lamborghini 164 scale die cast. So I did end up picking this up. It's nice looking. All right. But it's like this level of nice looking. So I think I just wish they would do something a little bit more special for the, uh, uh, the matchbox collectors stuff. You know, they do a nice paint job. I mean, it looks good, but there's nothing like different. Like if they would have tooled a metal base for it, maybe, or I don't know what else they would have done. Maybe given it special wheels, different wheels, just give it something to make it, uh, to make it a little bit, uh, more special other than the packaging and the packaging is nice. Okay. But that's my opinion. You guys let me know what you think. Of course. Uh, did you pick it up? Did you want to pick it up? whatever, what have you. All right. Now, lastly, what we've got is the weird stuff. First of all, the thing that I picked up was this old Ertl Firebird. Uh, this came out in, well, it was inspected by one. Uh, this came out, when did it come out? I don't know. Dyersville, Iowa. No date anywhere that I can see. Whatever. Let's not uh, dwell on that. Let's just open it up. I picked it up because it was a nice, clean example of this Ertl Firebird. And I kind of collect Firebirds, so there you go. Uh, the thing holding back a lot of the older Ertl castings were these big, bubbly-looking wheels that are kind of goofy. This is a replica Pontiac Firebird, by the way. But, I mean, it's pretty nice. It's not bad. A little dusty in the package. 
It's old though. It's definitely old. And we got some kind of paint rub issues on the side here from being in the package for so long and you will have that but this is a pretty cool example and I thought I would grab that and then we got the stuff from Jay um we got this guy another NASCAR piece he's been throwing one of these into almost every box this is what a Chevy Monte Carlo good wrench I know nothing about NASCAR you guys know that so I apologize Someone will comment who the driver is and maybe why it's significant and all that stuff. And I just don't know. And that's okay. Rubber tires, though. Uh, plastic base. It's an action brand casting. Rolls really smooth. That's kind of cool. Good wrench. All right. And then we've got uh, this guy here. This is a matchbox. Around the world, Hong Kong, cool photo, turn over and look through camera. And we got the passport to fun, so we definitely, oh, I guess I could have looked at it through the package. That's pretty neat. We got the van. I kind of collect the, the Matchbox van, so that's that's a neat add to the collection. Um, we've got the passport to fun, which is another blister on the back of the package. So we'll have to check out that. I'm sure that's going to be a list of the different ones. So can we look through, is it going to be possible to see through, ooh, look at that. This is, uh, where are we going? This is Japan? Hong Kong. There you go. That's kind of neat. Pretty cool, right? Little camera. Little matchbox camera casting. That's cool. I like cameras. Um, and then we got the casting itself. You can see the inside of that thing was almost kind of a picture of this. Not quite, but it was. And then we got our passport to fun. And where? what kind of fun we got? Well, this is kind of neat. Join Matchbox and me on a, great, uh, on a great adventure around the world. Start collecting today. It's so simple and so much fun. There are four categories in the journeys. I don't know. They made it so many of these. Look at that. Postcard places, international cities, mysterious journeys, natural wonders. And then uh, place the stickers here. So as you collect, you get the sticker for Hong Kong. So we would find that here in the international cities. And we would put the sticker here. And you collect them, and that's how you would collect. Sasquatch churro. This is kind of a cool idea. Um, like, if I was a kid, this would be fun. And it's somewhat educational, which is cool. Well, choose your free bonus. Free cars. Get Matchbox Around the World bonus vehicles and stickers not sold in store. If you buy five different Matchbox Around the World vehicles from the same segment, you can get a free bonus vehicle and sticker for that segment. you got to send a $2 check or money order plus shipping and handling, proof of purchase, and all that. So that's probably you had to get a bonus sticker probably to complete your collection for each one of these. So that's a little whatever. But I don't know. This is kind of neat. Just for like, I'll save this with my little weird... Mattel trinkets. Or I don't even know if it was it Mattel at this time. Whatever. You can even write your name on the back for who this passport belongs to. And you got the camera. That's kind of a cool, cool thing. I think that's neat. All right. We got two more vehicles to look at. I forgot about this basic Hot Wheels, so we'll just open up this. I'd like to get the Super Treasure out of this one. This is just the regular, but it is the, uh, the Porsche 935. Very nice looking color combo on this one. Uh, looks really good. Just a basic Hot Wheel and uh, digging that quite a bit. I think that is a, a nice one. Saw two of those on the pegs today. Neither was a Super. I bought both of them. Um, so there you go. Got that. And then lastly, we've got this WRX STI uh, Subaru from this Subaru series. This is like a dealership thing. Aero Pro Promotions LLC from Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, this is made exclusively for Subaru, 
And I don't know how many they made, but there I think there might have been like six, six or eight or something like that, different ones that you could get. And it, they're kind of neat. I mean, they look like a nice stock version of the car. They're kind of cheaply made, but that's okay. I mean, it's not any cheaper made than, I guess, a regular Hot Wheels, except for the fact that it doesn't have an interior. They all have, like, these blacked-out windows, so you can't see inside the car. And that's no biggie. It's actually got a separate piece for the spoiler. This is plastic. For the big wing on the back. Nice sharp graphics, though. Nice sharp Subaru logo. Clearly licensed by Subaru, obviously. Made for Subaru. It's got a fixed... Wheels are fixed on the axles. I don't know. I think these are cool. If you're a Subaru fan, I think this is probably a must-have for you, right? And Subaru fans are pretty ravenous when it comes to trying to collect all the Subaru stuff. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you like Subaru, you should have these in your collection, probably. I think this is really neat. All right, so long episode today, obviously, but a very good one. Uh, highlights for me, we're going to actually say I really actually am digging this Elite 64, but obviously... That is the highlight for me. Uh, just magical. Every time I add one of these to the collection, and uh, I just want to keep adding them, and I'm kind of like, oh, man, how can I get another one? How can I finagle another trade or, or do something? I'm never going to be able to fork out cash for this kind of stuff. It's just they're ridiculously priced. I think minimum price for one of these when someone's just asking straight up money for it. You know, you're looking at like $400 for most of them, $300, $400, sometimes a lot more, depending on the casting. And the release, it can be a lot more. This is kind of a mid-tier, maybe, uh, sort of thing. So maybe not as much as that. But, you know, still, anytime you're, like, looking at spending that kind of money on one little die-cast car, you got to kind of check your head and your priorities. And hopefully you, um, you know, have, you know, hopefully you're sitting pretty well to do if you're spending that kind of money on um, that type of collectible. So uh luckily i'm able to most all the ones i have have been able to work out some sort of deal for some sort of crazy kind of thing where i'm not really spending a bunch of money so that's the way i operate because that's the way you know i think everybody really should operate if they can um unless of course you know money ain't no object to you then buy what you want do what you want it's fine but yeah here we go there's this guy pretty awesome all right Thank you guys very much for watching another lengthy one. You guys have a great day. And uh, again, next week, got some really cool stuff coming. So check you then. Bye.